So uh, welcome back, everyone. So Nicholas is going to be talking about uh, LaTechify. Hi, right, thank you. Um, so I'll be presenting a little tool that I've been developing. Uh, it's called LaTechify. And in the first part of my talk, I will show you a little bit of what it can do. And in the second part, I will see if I can um, convince you that Julia actually makes this pretty useful. So Latechify is a package. It provides a function, uh, also called Latechify. Um, the purpose of this function is to take a Julia object uh, as an input and then spit out some form of LaTeX representation of this object. So Latechify supports a lot of, um, a lot of different inputs. Um, so here are some very simple examples. Um, but the really nice thing uh, is um, the support for expressions, uh, which it can uh, parse, and it can output um, LaTeXify or LaTeX formatted equations from it. Uh, it also does this uh, recursively and using broadcasting, so you can give it comp uh, container types. So here you have uh, a matrix, uh, welcome. Um, and you have a dict that you can supply. And also, I should also like, note that I have examples in, this, uh, in these slides, and like, the details are not important, so you just don't try to read all of the equations. They're nonsense anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So in these particular cases, um, there's actually more than one different kind of LaTeX uh, environment that you might want as an output. Um, so all different kinds of input has a default output, but you can override this using a keyword argument. Um, so you can choose to have your output as an, uh, a line or as a tabular environment or even as a markdown uh, table, which doesn't <laughs> render very nicely in this Beamer uh, presentation, but it's very handy for, uh, for Jupyter. Um, so what actually happens when you um, call LaTeXify is that you are creating a LaTeX string from the package LaTeX strings. Welcome. Um, and when you call print on such a LaTeX string, uh, then you get a text representation of, um, of your object. Uh, and when you display it, then uh, like whatever you're running will try to actually render it um, like where you are. And this works well for, for example, um, uh, Jupyter or Jupyter Lab or Hydrogen. Um, so you can get stuff rendered directly in your output field. Um, cool. So I said I would touch upon how uh, Julia can actually make this useful, and this comes down to the homo iconicity of Julia. So homo iconicity means that like Julia is able to represent its own code in the as a type in the language. Uh, this type is an expression. And we've already seen that at least some kinds of expressions we can uh, convert into LaTeX. Um, but what's really nice is the omnipresence of these expressions. Right? So Julia makes information available to you as a user uh, in a way that I have not encountered in any other language that I've been using. So for example, if you define just a, a pure Julia, Julia function, a simple thing, you can actually, using a, a macro, you can actually get access to the expression that this is being lowered into. So information is available to you. Um, and another nice thing with expressions is that when you can manipulate expressions and you can evaluate your expressions, this is what makes macros so powerful in, in Julia. Um, and with these macros, um, a lot of people have created a lot of very good uh, domain-specific languages for specific purposes. And these ones I use quite frequently in my, in my work. One of them is um, from Diff Eco EQ Biological. And there's actually a talk on this on Friday. I won't go into details. Um, but essentially, this allows you to... Oh, yes. Uh, this allows you to... Um, input uh, a model in uh, chemical arrow notations. So you're, you're modeling uh, chemical interactions and you can use an uh, arrow notation. The macro will parse this input and, and translate it into something that Yulia can use. And if Yulia can use it, then I've just said that information is usually available and it is here too. So I can access information that this has been processed, like the information that this has been processed into, uh, and I can use this to um, directly represent this object 
as a system of differential equations, or if I use my keyword argument, I can um, get a chemical reaction, um, like a chemical arrow notation. And here is where this is starting to become quite useful to me in a way that I didn't even expect when I started creating this. I created this because I was lazy and I didn't want to typeset something for my report. I, that, was, that was annoying. Uh, but what this ended up doing is it's allowing me to give um, an alternate representation of the stuff that I'm actually working on at the moment, the mathematical things that I'm working on. Uh, I can get a neat representation of this and that makes it much more easy for me to spot errors. So this is just a short, uh, quick thing. Like I have this in uh, a Jupyter document, and like, this is a dream to work with. Um, anyway, so there are more uh, DSLs. Um, most of them, in my, all of them in my examples, are from the differential equation suite, because that's pretty much all I do. Um, this in, is from uh, parameterized functions. And it allows you to input um, an ODE in a natural, natural way. And yet, once again, um, we can access this information and we can um, directly uh, convert it into something that's nice and readable. But also, when you use this DSL, um, it actually not only parses your equations, it also does symbolic calculations on these equations. So you get uh, like performance enhancing things uh, such as, uh, for example, the Jacobian or other things. Um, and this is again also accessible. So you can directly render the Jacobian of this uh, system of differential equations, um, either to spot errors or because you need it in a paper and you really can't be arsed to, to fix it yourself. Um, so, uh, so just final words, final notes. Uh, like information is usually accessible in Julia in a way that I had not imagined when I started with it. So like do look for it, um, and use it and try to make cool stuff with it. And especially important for me um, is if you create your own package and please forward any information that you have, like this entire thing with the DSLs was contingent on somebody having created a type with a field, with a, like correct information for me to use. They didn't know what I would use it for, but like, because they supplied that information, I could do something with it. Um, so with this, I would like to acknowledge some people, and um, among them, uh, Chris and David P. Sanders don't know it, but they are the reasons uh, why I actually started with uh, Julia. Uh, and with this, I would like to thank you. Uh, we do have time for questions, if some of you have some. Um, I noticed on your uh, GitHub page that you, you have an issue with uh, building functions, just showing functions by default. Um, yes. Yes, so, yes, actually. So I've been toying with this, and it turns out to be a little bit more complicated. But yeah, so the question is essentially boils down to, I have, I have started playing around with actually seeing if I can properly latecify a true Julia function, like something like this. And, and this little thing I sort of can, although I, I cannot latecify a function, it has to be a method, right? So I have to specify what kind of input it would have received. If I do that, I can latecify it, but it is uh, a little bit fragile because it sort of breaks if you do use um, like stuff in your functions which uh, latecify don't know how to handle. So it's like, yeah, it is implemented. It sort of works-ish, but only in the simple cases of like the function containing just pure mathematics. Hey, yeah, nice talk. Um, it looks really cool. But uh, so, just to make sure I correctly understand this, so, so once you lex, le, uh, lex uh, latexify it, right, it's just for checking how the, the thing looks. It's not for exporting it actually to latex and then save on typing it up. Like, you can't just get the raw latex form of it. You get the. Uh, yes, you can get the raw latex form. That was the first purpose for 
uh, like okay. where I wrote it. So if you print it out, this like is copy pasteable, right? Uh, but also, um, so Julia Bayes has this very very nice thing called the clipboard. So I also have uh, a function that just automatically toggles copy to clipboard whenever you do a latecify. So you automatically get the text version of the output into your clipboard and then you can just copy, um, like you don't have to copy it, you just paste it into your document. Perfect, thanks. One last question, uh, it's a great work by the way. And do you support any tables, data frames? Uh? Yes, yes, uh, yeah. data frames, yes. Uh, the very rudimentary, I think. So uh, it is very easy to add support to different stuff. It's just I, I'm quite narrow in what I use myself. So I require someone to actually post an issue uh, mm -hmm. for me to notice that I should be supporting this. Right? So please do. Yeah, let's thank the speaker once again.